Java is not just Java. Java is the JVM. Yes. And the JVM is, I think, one of the most powerful programming platforms that we have. So let's say you decide you hate Java, the language. There's always Kotlin. There's Groovy. There's um, Scala. You know, there's these other. And you can use JRuby and JPython. And so it's not. If you decide that the syntax is not really for you, there's there's plenty of places to go while still being on the JVM. And then the JVM is great because you can kind of run it anywhere and it powers things like Android devices. And, you know, it's just the JVM isn't going anywhere. This is it's, 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 it's years ago now, but I, I was at a conference and I was I was at a, uh, the the party afterwards, the dinner. And and uh, I was sat next to Ola Binney of um, ThoughtWorks at the time. I'm not sure where he is now. But he was saying, he said something that stuck in my mind is that is that the then, which was a few years ago, the amount of development effort that had gone into the JVM was about five hundred person years of development Oof. effort, and nobody's going to do that again, <laughs> or or at least no. it's, it doesn't seem to be on the cards that anybody's going to do that again. No, and, and, and so you don't need to. It's an the important JVM. piece. Of, <laughs> yeah, the JVM is an important piece of software. You know, doing that from scratch, that amount of effort that time money and effort that's gone into that over you know and yeah you know there are things that you that, that you'd that wish were different but it has some remarkable things and you know compiler optimizer runtime compiler optimizations and garbage collection you know if you, you can get versions of the jvm where the, where the garbage collection cost is almost zero right you know, and, and, and all of that kind of stuff which is remarkable and there's, there's multiple garbage collectors now, so we don't have to yeah. mess around tuning the garbage collector. We just pick yeah. one off the shelf, which works the way that we want it to. I, I love that because, you know, when I'm when I was working in London, um, you know, 15 years ago or so, the, all the interview questions were around tuning the garbage collector and, and understanding that. And now you still need to understand what garbage collection is and what the trade offs are. But instead of having to, like, tune things and tweak things, you just go, well, I'm going to use ZGC or I'm going to use, you know, whichever one. Yeah. Um, what is it? Shenandoah or whichever one optimizes for the thing that you care about. Um or, you know, use a different, because the other thing about the JVM, of course, is that it's not all about Oracle. We have Azul, we have Red Hat, we have like a whole bunch of other vendors yeah. who can give you support and give you a different JVM, but they all behave, you know, in a, in a predictable way with yes. things like performance optimizations, which I love the fact that the JVM can optimize the performance for you. So whenever you see C programmers coming to the JVM and they write kind of weird code because it's more optimal, you're like, no, but yeah. like the compiler has no chance of optimizing that. Like, yeah. Just let it do its job, right? Yeah. Beautiful code and it will do the right thing. Yeah. It, yeah. It, that was one of the deep things that I, the, the surprising things, I suppose, that, that I learned to LMAX was that, you know, the fastest code is the simplest to read. Right. Because because then the compiler can read it and it can optimize it for you. <laughs> right, exactly. I love that our code yeah. at LMAX was like small classes, small methods, readable, yeah. limited branching, and and that made it fast. And and again, back to your virtuous cycle. Good yeah. engineering practices lead to better stuff. Like yes. it's just <laughs> you know, and, and and I think that's why I liked your book. I'm going to pivot a little bit and talk about um, modern software engineering. What I loved about it is that suddenly all these things that I because I studied computer science at university and you know and I studied loads of stuff so I can pass interview questions and get jobs and stuff and all this stuff that I kind of read in a dry way in a kind of like academic way you kind of put it into into the context of and this is why we care about it and this is why it's good for us as developers and I was like oh yeah I want to write code that like conforms <laughs> to solid principles or whatever you know whatever it was like I, it was really motivating to understand why I like writing code the way that we did at LMAX and why, you know, it's 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 nice to have pretty code and what pretty code looks like and you know and why it's pretty, you no? Know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So so, so uh, yeah, so so I, I think we'd both conclude that Java's not dead, it's not dying, it's it, it's gonna be it's gonna be around and important for a long time. There's another yeah. thing I think I think you said you said a version of this earlier on in the conversation as well. Somebody once it was around the Almax time, but somebody said there's um, there's a lot to be said for boring technologies. Right, right. <laughs> it doesn't have to be new and exciting. You know, Java's stable. It's it works. It, you can build real world class systems with it. Um, it can be very efficient. It can be very fast. Very very fast indeed. 
and yep. you know and um, and it's improving to remove things that people found noisy or distracting yeah. and i think as as developers we are often chasing this dopamine hit of of something and yeah. and often we're looking for new and exciting and i learned something back to new. the froth exactly and yeah. and i'm a great developer because i just learned rust over the weekend or whatever um yeah. but it's and and that's fine if you want to learn rust at the weekend that's fine but like in the day job, it's nice to have something like Java, which will always look a particular way. You can always write code in a particular style. And then I'm not thinking about, well, I might be thinking about how modern pattern matching works because I actually don't know how pattern matching works right now. But like, I'm going to be thinking about how do I get this feature into the user's hands? Or yeah. how do I speed up the performance of my Android app so that the people aren't just waiting for it? You know? And I can yeah. be thinking about the, the, the problem I'm trying to solve instead of distracting myself with, God, my job is so boring. I have to go and learn Rust over the weekend, kind of thing. That 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 kind of, that reminds me that I, I feels like our conversation keeps going in little loops. But that takes me back to the AI thing to, to a, a little bit because the the tool it's it's a tool. Java's a tool. It's it's not fun. You know, I, I'm not a Java programmer. I'm a programmer who uses Java. That's a different thing. That's the way that I th I think about me anyway. Uh, and and you know the tool can be stable and 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 not change, um, and we, you know we don't have to be looking for 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 you know radical differences in the tool unless they're advantageous. So right. at some point there's going to be a step change where we raise the level of abstraction, and I think that's the promise of AI. So so AI. I think what promises to raise the level of abstraction of software development. And at that point, that will be an important step. I'm not quite sure it's done it yet, but in, at the point, so, you know, what I mean by that is that, you know, we can express ideas more concisely, more simply and still get the same result. Right. And, and you know, until, you know, for me, the differences between functional programming or object oriented programming don't really do that very much. Uh, yes, there are nice parts of functional. There are nice parts of object orientation, and I tend to mix right. and match. Um, but 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 they don't significantly rate. You know, a you know somebody people will argue with this in the comments, no doubt. But <laughs> but but you know, a team writing system, you know, a functional system are not ten times more productive than a team writing an object oriented system. But at yeah. some point, that kind of step change in a level of abstraction, as happened when we went from assembler to you know, high level languages, for example, at some point we'll find a version of that. But until then, I'm, I'm less interested in the minutiae of language change, if I'm honest. Yeah. Yes, yeah, some of it's nice. Some of the things I, 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 like, I like, but it's, it's not it's at the nuance. forefront of a my mind. Of it, a lot of it's nuance, isn't it? And, you know, yeah. nice to have stuff. I, I mean, I, I agree. And I, I think that the AI point, I've been thinking a lot about how I would use AI. And one of the things that stuck in my mind is, let's say I wanted to write a, a back-end application in JavaScript, which, you know, I don't know if I'd want to do that. But I could ask AI, like, can you... I, I know what my what my program would do if I wrote it in Java. I need, like, yeah. a server with sockets listening on... So, you know, and I, I, it's this shape. And I could ask AI to do that in JavaScript, for example, and then I'd be like, great, I don't have to go away and learn all of the syntax for that kind of thing and all the nuance on how JavaScript works because I can come with my expertise as a Java developer and say, generate something which looks a bit like this and then I can go in and tweak it. So that for me would be a productivity gain in a language I don't know very well. Yeah. But I still need to understand how programming works. Otherwise yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know. absolutely. And, and, and that's a complicated, nuanced thing in its own right. The, 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 you know, the, the stuff that, that we do think are the foundations is complex enough without all of the froth on the surface as well. Right. And uh, it, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's kind of one of those socio-technical things, that, as, as, we, as we keep going back to, that the problem is, is that it tends, particularly, you know, people at the more junior end of the spectrum tend to think that the, the froth is the whole job. Right. And I, don't, I don't think it is. I think that there are deeper, more important things that that are you know the whole the, the whole job and the froth is often too often gets in the way. One of my favourite conference presentations of all time was Kristin Gorman, and she did a presentation that was 
comparing um, software to making cakes. <laughs> And and she said, you don't, you know, if you're a, if you're a, if you're a top chef, you don't use cake mix. Right. <laughs> and she can, right. she did she did a she did a side by side comparison of this was a few years ago side by side comparison of using Hibernate, the Java um, uh, object, object relational yeah. mapping tool, versus writing exactly the same application in SQL. And there was way more code in the Hibernate solution than there was in the SQL version. Uh, and she, and she did it with 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 wit and humor and it was it was a really good presentation it's it's a few years ago i'll try i'll try and remember to put it in the link in the description uh, to the presentation if anybody's interested but but it's it's that difficulty of trying to and 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 i hope our channel helps us to find some of those deeper things to think about i think yes i think one of the things that and one of the conclusions I've come to, especially when I'm talking about career advice for, for programmers, is that developers, the job of a developer is not what we think it is. Yeah. And and I don't mean just what developers think it is. I think the whole industry has it wrong in terms of yeah. what our job is, what's really valuable. And you can see it in interview questions. You can see it in job specs. You can see it in the way we talk about it. You can see it in the way that we fire developers for reasons like it's yeah. and it's because we still think like what is it 70 years into this industry that like we type code yeah. and and that's not what we do you know there's there like you said there's the, the the deeper stuff the understanding that i've always said a senior developer is one whose answer is it depends and then knows what it depends on right yeah. and <clears throat> But we don't teach that at university. We don't teach that at boot camp. We teach yeah. how to write Hello World. Yeah. And uh, I think this... And we do that without test driven development. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <clears throat> when I was writing Head First Java, I was talking to Bert Bates, one of the co-authors, about like, can we please talk about testing? Can we not do like public site void main Hello yeah. World? Because like, that's easy, but that's not what you do as a programmer. That's not yeah. how a professional developer works. You yeah. do have a little box in there saying you should write tests. Tests are a good thing. Um, <laughs> I like. I would like to teach Java in a fundamentally different way. Me and my husband, Isra, who yeah. you know as well, we talk yeah. a lot about what would what would a Java one hundred and one look like to us, and it is not. This is what objects are, and this is like what a main method is. It is here's a unit test. Yeah. Write this. Use the IDE because you're going to use an IDE. <coughs> you're not going to use a text editor to generate the the answers, the code, iterate yeah. over the test, commit it to Git. That is 101 of development. Using the tools, using a build tool, using Git, using the IDE, and and figuring out what objects are by just using them. Here is a customer. It's got stuff in it. Okay, that's an object. Great. Let's yeah. not talk about object oriented programming. I, I had an interesting experience recently. I, I don't. I don't teach absolute beginners how to code very often uh, and um and but but one of my nephews said he was interested in learning how to code so i thought I, so I, I i helped him a little bit sort of get his first first steps and we we started with python because that's a nice easy language to l low impedance language to kind of learn but we started test first <laughs> Right. So his first stop, the first thing that we wrote was was a test to try and try out some ideas, and we just did some simple kind of mathematical things of you know adding some numbers and validating that what it, and it seemed to work perfectly well. I don't know whether he's carried on doing anything with his learning to program or not, so I don't know whether it worked in that sense. But certainly the first steps were at least as easy as teaching Hello World, um, right, and. and and I think would get a better outcome and actually gives you a really nice way of trying out your ideas, writing the right. test, which is and what it does anyway. And you get a nice anyway, green tick at the end of it saying yeah. it works. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it works, it seemed to work really well. So I, did, I didn't, yeah, I didn't definitely agree with that. So yeah, so I, I think that, I don't think that we understand what developers really are, or what they do, what's, yeah. what's the fundamental set of skills. Like whenever, so I remember one interview years ago in London uh, when I interviewed for a betting firm who later became closely associated with the work that we did. Um, and yeah. they, uh, they asked me, what is the API of a struts call that does this? And I was like, I don't know. I'm going to Google that. 
Yeah. And like I failed that interview because I didn't know the API of something. When in actual yeah. fact, working for an organization like that, the key skill is asking the business users, what is it you really need? Do you yeah. really want that? What are you trying to achieve? What is the pain that the users are feeling? How can I change work within the existing system to make that better for, for our end users? Yeah, ab absolutely. And uh, I... <clears throat> There are some people that, that that I know that hold all of those sorts of things in their heads. I don't think that's what makes them better programmers, though. Right. As you say, it's 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 the other stuff that you know, my memory is terrible. I, I, I um, and it's probably always been bad. <laughs> it's better. It's been better than it is now. But 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 yeah. So 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 I'd be much more interested in. In, in a job interview of testing people's search skills than asking them whether right. they know a particular API. That, that's completely irrelevant because chat GPT can certainly tell me that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, uh, Stack Overflow can tell me that. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>